Hey friends, Miss Cassie here with Soul and Public Library's Digital Storytime. This month we're talking about winter celebrations and this week we are going to talk all about Kwanzaa. But first, we need to sing our welcome song, which means we need to get our clapping hands ready. So we're going to wiggle our fingers and shake our hands and rub them together really fast, really fast, really fast. And put them on our knees. All right. Here we go. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. All right, what do we do after we clap our hands? That's right, we stomp our feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. All right, what comes after we stomp our feet? That's right, we twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, twirl around. All right. For our last verse, we're going to be as quiet as we can. And we're going to whisper, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray. Hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. For our theme song this week, we are going to spread Kwanzaa love. Here we go. Let's all do a little clapping. Let's all do a little clapping. Let's all do a little clapping and spread Kwanzaa love. Let's all do a little jumping. Let's all do a little jumping. Let's all do a little jumping and spread Kwanzaa love. Let's all do a little bending. Let's all do a little bending. Let's all do a little bending and spread Kwanzaa love. Let's all do a little twirling. Let's all do a little twirling. Let's all do a little twirling and spread Kwanzaa love. All right, here's our last one. We're going to do a little sitting. Let's all do a little sitting. Let's all do a little sitting. Let's all do a little sitting and spread Kwanzaa love. Yay! This week, we are so lucky to have Miss Stephanie and Mr. Ray join us to tell us about how their family celebrates Kwanzaa. Thanks for joining us, friends. Hey, hello to everyone who's listening. We're excited to talk to you today and hope you're enjoying the holiday season. And when Ray and I first met, I actually was a school teacher. And so I had read to kids from a book that was all about Kwanzaa. And so when I met Ray, I thought that it would be cool if he and I would also celebrate Kwanzaa. And of course, he liked that idea too, right, Ray? Yep. So he, um, you know, we go to a church here in Iowa City and we wanted to kind of combine Kwanzaa with our other beliefs in the church that we go to. And so we just came up with something and we celebrate how the seven days and Ray, do you want to talk about the, um, each of the, yeah. Uh, yeah. each day has a special focus. Yeah. The first day, and this involves us lighting a candle each day. Okay. Should I show them that? Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. We have yeah. this that my parents had. 
and there's a special significance to the candles. Do you, Ray, do you want, we light the black one first and it stands for? The black is for the people of Africa. Yeah. And then we go to red and that stands for the struggle. Yeah. So we do a black one, then a red one, then we go to the green. And when we light that one. That's the hope of other people um, for, the future. for the future through that struggle. Yeah. So every day, and mm -hmm. Ray lights a candle that's the first thing we do. And then we have a little prayer. Okay, the first day, uh, it's called Umoja. And that's a, um, that's a Swahili word, that's East Africa. And it means unity. And I will read it. Well, just do one so you get an idea. Every day has a separate little one that we read. We will work for unity among all people and focus our mission to right the wrongs of division based on beliefs of superiority and inferiority. We will work for unity with each other. And then I always have a response. And if we have anybody come to our house to help celebrate with us, because sometimes we invite people, they join in on this. And we always say, work, work with, with us to, to respect, respect life and each other because, because life is sacred. sacred. And, and we, we are because, because God, God is. So that's, that's what beautiful. We do. Oh, thanks. That's what we do. And every day we do one. And after that prayer, then some of you kids out there might know or have heard the Lord's Prayer when you go to church, if you happen to be Christian. So then we join together and we say the Lord's Prayer. And we hold hands when we say that. And then there's a real long prayer that's called the Kwanzaa Prayer that we kind of made up. And we won't read that because it's pretty long, but we read that and then we always play a song. And the song we play is from a, um, it's a group called Sounds of Blackness and they actually sing all of the Kwanzaa days. And the song is called the Kwanzaa song. I'm gonna play just a little bit of it so you can hear it. It's on an album that's called Time for Healing, if your parents ever want to get it. Times of Healing, Sounds of Blackness, the Kwanzaa song. Here it is. And we sometimes dance. <laughs> Move with it. I can stop that, but you can see it's got a real beat to it. So sometimes we pe pretend we're playing drums and sometimes we dance around. <laughs> and then the last thing we do every day is we seal it with a kiss. kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and we wish each other a happy Kwanzaa. That's lovely. So you mentioned that sometimes you invite people over to your house to celebrate Kwanzaa. Do you have the same people come for each night or do you invite different friends for different nights? We invite different friends for different nights. And one time we had our grandchildren over when they were really little and we made the mistake of doing this first before we fed them. <laughs> that was not a good decision. So now when we do that, we always make sure we eat first. So everybody's stomach is full and they're ready to really have some fun with Kwanzaa. But we invite different friends different times. And sometimes it's just us. And it goes on for seven nights. And by the end, on the last day, after we've lit all the candles, then we just let the candles burn down to the very end. And that, so that day, they, they really burn quite a while. That's great. And Kwanzaa starts the day after Christmas. Is that right? And then it goes until New Year's Day? Yes, exactly. And the last day is a day where you can exchange gifts. And so we now, something new that we have this year for the first time is Ray's daughter is a knitter. And so she, I had her knit us both stockings. 
So just like we have Christmas stockings, we now have Kwanzaa stockings. And so on that last night, we'll have something in our Kwanzaa stockings so we'll be able to exchange. So that makes the holiday season last a whole extra week. <laughs> That's great. I, I have seen pictures of those Kwanzaa stockings, actually. <laughs> They're very cool. They're, very They're great. Excited. Ray got his last year at Christmas time, and I got mine this year. So we're all set now for Kwanzaa this year. That's right. Perfect timing for Christmas, and then you can start celebrating the next day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, is there anything else that you would like people to know who don't celebrate Kwanzaa or who ha maybe haven't even heard of Kwanzaa before? Yeah, if you uh, look at the American history part of celebrating faiths, you know, um, how particularly in the 60s, um, a long time ago, the civil rights kids. movement, uh, there was a need for something like that to come out from a uh, cultural point of view. And a guy from California, actually, a uh, professor, and I can't think of his name, kind of started it. And it just kind of spread across the country over the years, you know, as far as the traditional holiday celebration, you know, during the, uh, you know, Christmas year. Uh, and it even overlaps, it just, it kind of blends in with Hanukkah and they all kind of flow together, you know? So it's really a, it, it just increases our diversity on how we uh, celebrate our faith. And how we can understand people who might be different than us. And that's really special. So it's a fun thing to do. Well, thank you so much for your time, friends. It's so wonderful that we get to share your experiences and celebrations with Kwanzaa with our families who are listening. So we're going to say goodbye now. Thank you so much. You bet. And be sure to thank read you. a book about Kwanzaa. You'll like it. <laughs> Bye. 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 That was so great to learn about how our, some of our friends celebrate Kwanzaa. Now, something that Miss Stephanie and Mr. Ray talked about was listening to music and dancing <laughs> or playing the drums. So for our next song, we are going to tap our sticks. Now, if you have some sticks at home that you can tap, you can go get them for our song. If you don't have any sticks at home, that's okay. You can just use your fingers and pretend that your fingers are sticks. Okay, are you ready? Let's play. Tap your sticks, tap your sticks. One, two, three. One, two, three. Can you tap your sticks? Can you tap your sticks? Just like me, just like me. Tap your sticks, tap your sticks, way up high, way up high. Now bend down, now bend down, tap the ground, tap the ground. Yay! All right, we're going to do it again as quiet as we can. Here we go. Tap your your sticks. One, two, three. One, two, three. Can you tap your sticks? Can you tap your sticks? Just like me. Just like me. Tap your sticks. Tap your sticks. Way up high. Way up high. Now bend down. Now bend down. Tap the ground. Tap All right, we're gonna do it one more time <clears throat> as loud as we can. <laughs> Here we go. Tap your sticks, tap your sticks. One, two, three. One, two, three. Can you tap your sticks? Can you tap your sticks? Just like me, just like me. Tap your sticks. Tap your sticks way up high, way up high. 
Now bend down, now bend down, tap the ground, tap the ground. Yay! I have with me today a Kinara, which is a special candle holder used to celebrate Kwanzaa. And Miss Stephanie and Mr. Ray showed us their Kinara. And this is a Kinara that I borrowed from the African American Museum up in Cedar Rapids. They're letting us use this so that we can learn about Kwanzaa together. Now, during Kwanzaa, just like during Hanukkah, each night you light a candle. So for Kwanzaa, the first candle that you light is the middle candle. Now, what color is this middle candle? Can you see? Let me hold it up for you. What color is this middle candle? That's right, it is black. And this middle candle represents the African people. So that's where the celebration starts. Now the next day, the second candle gets lit. Now what color is this candle? Can you see? That's right, this candle is red and it represents the struggle. The third night, we light another candle. What color is this candle? That's right, it's green. And the green candles represent hope for the future. Now each night, you alternate between red candles and green candles until all of the candles on your canara are lit. Now let's count how many candles do we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven candles to represent seven days of celebration. Kwanzaa is a Swahili word that means first fruits or harvest. So for a lot of people's Kwanzaa celebrations, they have a basket of fruit that they use with their celebration. Now I have a basket of fruit here and I would like to go through this basket with you and I would like you to help me um, name what these fruits are. Is that something that you can help me with? Great. So here is our first fruit. Now it has this very distinct shape. And this one is green and a little red. Do you know what this fruit is called? That's right. It's a pear. Mmm. Here is another fruit in my basket. It also has a special shape, and this fruit is yellow. What is this fruit called? That's right, it's a lemon. Here's a fruit from my harvest basket. Now this fruit can be many different colors, but this one is green. What is this fruit called? That's right, it's an apple. And the last fruit in my basket <laughs> is this one. It is a great shape. It is yellow. Maybe you can pretend to talk on the phone <laughs> with it. What is this fruit called? That's right, it is a banana. And for Kwanzaa, Many people also use this special food to celebrate. Can you see in there, what is this food called? That's right, this is an ear of corn. We're very familiar with corn here in Iowa. <laughs> and usually there is one ear of corn for every child in the family that is celebrating Hanukkah. So if there is one child in your family, you would have one ear of corn. 
In my family, there were four kids, so we would have had four ears of corn if we celebrated Hanukkah. All right, we're going to put our food back in the basket. Let's count how many uh, pieces of fruit and vegetables we have. One, two, three, four, and five. This looks like a very full harvest basket. Our story that we're going to read today is called Lil Rabbit's Kwanzaa, and it is written by Donna L. Washington and illustrated by Shane W. Evans. Now this is the story of how one little rabbit, how his family celebrates Kwanzaa. Little Rabbit was not having a very good Kwanzaa. Being the littlest rabbit in the family wasn't easy. He couldn't remember the name of all the days. Remember, Miss Stephanie and Mr. Roy told us about how each day has a special name and a special meaning. And seven is a lot to remember. He wasn't allowed to light the candles. His brothers and sisters made wonderful gifts to share, but Little Rabbit was too embarrassed to share his gifts. He hated being the youngest. He was always in the way, and everyone told him, he was too little to help. Have you, any of you been told that before? You are too little to help. The only part of Kwanzaa that he really loved was the big feast called Karamu. This year, he wasn't even going to have that. Grandma Rabbit was sick. She lay in bed all day drinking dandelion tea. And Mama Rabbit was so busy taking care of her that she didn't have time to cook. Mama, if Grandma Rabbit is sick, who will make the feast of Karamu? Lil Rabbit asked his mother. Shame on you, Lil Rabbit, his mama said. Grandma Rabbit is sick, and all you think about is your stomach. You go outside. Hmm. Poor Lil Rabbit. Lil Rabbit hopped out and sat on the big gnarled tree. He really wanted to go and talk to Grandma Rabbit. She was very wise. So Little Rabbit sat and thought. He thought about all the things his grandma had said about Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is a special time when we help each other. That's what Grandma Rabbit said. That's it! Little Rabbit jumped up and danced around. I'll bring Grandma Rabbit a special treat for Karamu. That will make her feel better. Lil Rabbit hopped down the road. Where are you going so fast? Mama Oriole asked Lil Rabbit. I'm going to find a tasty treat for Grandma Rabbit. She's sick. I want her to have a good karamu. And Little Rabbit hopped away. Mama Oriole didn't know what karamu was, but she knew Grandma Rabbit. Grandma Rabbit always brought out warm seed cakes and worm pudding when the weather got cold. <sighs> Poor Grandma Rabbit, said Mama Oriole. I wish there was something I could do to help. Hmm. Little Rabbit stopped by the side of the path. He looked under some logs to see if he could find something special for Grandma Rabbit. What are you doing, Little Rabbit? asked Groundhog, sticking his head out of a patch of grass. I'm trying to find a Zawadi for Grandma Rabbit. She's sick, and I want her to feel better. Little Rabbit hopped off. Groundhog didn't know what a Zawadi was, but he knew Grandma Rabbit. She always had time to make little toys for the animals when they were bored. Poor Grandma Rabbit, said Groundhog. I wish there was something I could do to help. Do you know what a Zawadi is? That is the special name for presents that are exchanged at Kwanzaa. It's another Swahili word. Lil Rabbit hopped down to the pond. Maybe he could find something pretty for Grandma Rabbit. 
What are you doing, little rabbit? Asked the frogs. I'm looking for something pretty for Grandma Rabbit. She's sick and she should have something pretty to hang on the wall at Kwanzaa time. Little rabbit scratched an ear and hopped away. The frogs didn't know anything about Kwanzaa time, but they knew Grandma Rabbit. She could paint beautiful pictures and write wonderful poems. Poor Grandma Rabbit, said one of the frogs. I wish there was something we could do to help. Little Rabbit hopped through the field looking for berries. Where are you going, Little Rabbit? Mama Field Ma Mouse asked. She was dragging all of her children behind her. Grandma Rabbit is sick, said Little Rabbit. I'm going to make sure she has a good karamu. I'm going to find as many berries as I can. Little Rabbit looked proud as he hopped through the meadow. Mama Field Mouse didn't know anything about Karamu, but she knew Grandma Rabbit. Grandma Rabbit helped out with the children when Mama Field Mouse had to run errands. Poor Grandma Rabbit, said Mama Field Mouse. I wish there was something I could do to help. Little Rabbit scampered through the trees. Good morning, Little Rabbit, said Papa Squirrel. Why are you sniffing around the trees? I'm looking for something to give Grandma Rabbit. She's sick, and I want her to have a good Kwanzaa. And Little Rabbit hopped away. Papa Squirrel didn't know anything about Kwanzaa, but he knew Grandma Rabbit. She always helped him gather nuts in the fall. She even helped him remember where he hid them. Poor Grandma Rabbit, said Papa Squirrel. I wish there was something I could do to help. Little Rabbit spent the whole day trying to find something for Grandma Rabbit. He searched as hard as he could, but he didn't find anything at all. He was very sad. Can you make a sad face? Yeah, maybe crying a little. Little Rabbit was very sad. I guess I am too little to do anything. As the sun was setting, he hopped slowly home. But when he opened the door, he had a big surprise. Everyone was there. Grandma Rabbit was sitting in the big chair with a huge smile on her face. Can you give me a big smile? Yeah. The frogs had brought pink flowers from the lily pads. Mama and Papa Spider hung them from the ceiling like lanterns. Mama Oriole was conducting a fine chorus of birds. Groundhog brought little toys and gifts for everyone. Mama Field Mouse had gotten together with Mama Possum and Mama Raccoon to make a delicious feast. The air was full of excitement. Mama Rabbit served the plates and Lil Rabbit ate until he thought he would burst. Looks like Lil Rabbit got his karamu after all. After that, Papa Rabbit told funny stories about Briar Rabbit, Anasazi the spider, guinea fowl, and mosquito. The stories made everyone laugh. Then Papa Spider plucked on his web strings. Cricket got out his fiddle, and all the animals had a wonderful dance. Remember, Miss Stephanie and Mr. Ray said that music and dancing were a part of their Kwanzaa celebration. And look, they're a part of Lil Rabbit's Kwanzaa celebration too. Grandma Rabbit taught everyone a new word. Harambe, she called out as her friends danced. It means let's pull together. We don't need anyone to tell us that, said Papa Squirrel. We already pulled together. Everyone laughed and shouted, Harambe! 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 When the karamu was over, Lil Rabbit sat with his grandma in the big chair. Why are you so sad, Lil Rabbit? His grandma asked. Didn't you have a good time? Yes. Lil Rabbit said quietly, but I wanted to do something special for you. 
Grandma Rabbit just laughed. You silly rabbit, she said, hugging Lil Rabbit tight. If you hadn't gone looking for Karamu this morning, it never would have found its way here tonight. Lil Rabbit frowned. But I'm the only one who didn't have anything to share. His grandma smiled. You shared your dream, Lil Rabbit, and your dream brought all our friends and neighbors together. That's a big thing. Lil Rabbit felt proud. My dream did all that? Yes. I'm not surprised, though, his grandma said. Why not? asked Lil Rabbit. Because I have faith in you. If you have faith, Lil Rabbit, there's always hope. Oh, I'll try to remember that, said Lil Rabbit, yawning. Can you give a big yawn? <sighs> Lil Rabbit looked tired after a long day looking for Karamu, don't you think? Yeah. By the way, said Grandma Rabbit, snuggling him close. This was the best Karamu ever. The end. Now, in the back of the book, it talks about the seven principles of Kwanzaa or the different themes for each day of celebration. So it has some of the days that we talked about with Miss Stephanie and Mr. Ray. Things like unity, self-determination, working together, supporting each other in business, purpose, creativity, and faith. So if you want to learn more about the different days of Kwanzaa, this would be a great book to borrow and read together again at home. All right, friends, this is the end of our Kwanzaa story time. And before we sing our goodbye song, we want to give a big thank you to the Solon Public Library Foundation for sponsoring our story times the whole month of December. The Solon Public Library Foundation supports library programs like this one and also big building plans for the library in the future. We are very lucky to have their support. But now it's time for our goodbye song. We read a book, and we played a game, and we sang a song together. We read a book, and we played a game, we had a fun adventure. Now go read a book, and go play a game. Sing a little tune. Go.